You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MsArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MsArtastic.com now. of teaching the elements of art to kids, tips and tricks. So our education is an essential part of a child's development, fostering creativity, self-expression, and critical thinking. Teaching children the elements of art is is a fundamental aspect of our education and provides the building blocks for creating and appreciating art. The elements of art include line, shape, form, space, value, color, and texture, and are used to create um, visual compositions that communicate ideas, emotions, and messages. So we're going to be talking and exploring the importance of the elements of art to, of teaching elements of art to children, um, and then also just incorporating them into our education, whether, just tips and tricks for that. Whether you're a teacher or parent, home giver, or um, if you're just somebody who's a homeschool parent, maybe looking to understand the elements of art and how to teach them to children, essentially, I'm going to help you understand this so you can enrich their lives and then help them develop important skills that will benefit them through their academic and personal lives. So. Our educational, our education really is a vital component of a child education as it encourages uh, creativity, uh, self-expression, and critical thinking. It provides a platform for children to explore and express their thoughts, feelings, and ideas, but it also fosters an appreciation for the arts. One essential aspect of our education is the teaching of the elements of art. The elements of art include line, shape, form, value, color, uh, and texture, um, as and space. <laughs> Missed that one, I think. But they are the fundamental building blocks of visual art and are used to create compositions and convey meaning and um, emotions. Teaching the elements of art to children is really crucial for several reasons. First, it encourages creativity and self-expression, and by learning how to use the elements of art, (coughs) sorry, children can communicate their ideas and emotions visually, which can be particularly um, beneficial for children who have difficulty maybe expressing themselves verbally. Uh, Second, teaching the elements of art uh, helps develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. Children can learn to analyze and deconstruct visual compositions, identifying the different elements and how they work together to create meaning. This really helps children to develop analytical and problem solving skills that can be applied to other academic areas. And third, teaching the elements of art will improve visual literacy and appreciation of art. By learning how to recognize and analyze the elements of art, children can have an understanding um, and appreciation of art, which can, of course, enrich their lives and broaden their horizons. Finally, teaching the elements of art benefits academic performance in other subjects. Um, Studies have shown that art education can can really improve performance in other areas, such as reading and math. So teaching the art elements of arts can sometimes really feel or seem daunting, but it really can be, and I promise you it can be a totally enjoyable and rewarding experience for both the teacher and student. So we're going to talk a little bit about some tips and tricks, so make sure you grab something to write with or save this post, blog post, podcast episode, however you're right now watching this, or if you're on the Artastic Collective, you're watching it right now, um, it's one of the... Um, replays for Prodi, uh, then make sure you are watching this. Grab something to write with. If you have your phone and you want to type it into a Google Doc or something, that's what I love to do. It's my thing now. Um, everything's on Google Docs. <laughs> ah! uh, devices are really like, it's a love-hate thing, guys. Okay, anyways, moving on. So tips and tricks. I want to make sure that you're ready. So if you have other people distracting you or other things distracting you right now, you got to close 
shows off that stuff, get everybody settled because we're gonna dive on in this and it's gonna help you. So you gotta, you gotta be showing up for you right now. I'm here for you, you gotta come other, other halfway, okay? Um, so number one is to incorporate our projects and activities into the curriculum. So again, making sure that you're really filling everything in, not just with like talking, but like incorporating all of our projects and activities into the curriculum, um, really to engage kids with the elements of art. And then as you're teaching, like talk about all the different elements that are being used in the project. Even though the focus might be on value, I'm sure you're still using line or shape in there. And you could talk about what ones you're using while you're using them if you're doing a demo or something like that. I think that's really important is to like make thinking visible. I'm gonna say it over and over again. Make thinking visible! In your art classroom, we gotta make thinking visible. We gotta model thinking so that way our kids can also learn, understand that, and then make things visible, visible themselves. Number two, use age-appropriate language and demonstrations. So it's really essential to uh, use language and demonstrations that are appropriate for the age and skill level of the kids that you're teaching. Uh, using age-appropriate language and demonstrations will really help ensure that kids are understanding the concepts that you're teaching. Next is to encourage experimentation. Uh, and exploration, encouraging experimentation and exploration can really help foster creativity and develop problem solving skills in your classroom with your kids. Number four is to provide constructive feedback and critique. I love providing constructive feedback and critique. It really can help kids, uh, teens, whoever, high school kids, university level, improve their skills and develop confidence. I found that the most valuable when I went to Emily Carr University. Um, over in Vancouver. Number five is to integrate technology and digital tools. Integrating tech and digital tools is a really great way to summon the attention of your students. I know we are, I mean, like think about how much time you and me are spending on that, right? We're all being ding dinged into giving them attention. Sometimes, unless you can resist, which I try. That's why I'm not on social media all that often. <laughs> don't have time for that. All right, uh, but uh, YouTube, you and me YouTube. All right, <laughs> next is to, uh, yeah, basically you're just trying to orientate and facilitate new and provide exciting ways, new ways to explore art with your kids, right? So using that as a vessel, tech as a vessel for art education. Uh, next is to, I keep thinking I have a mouse here because I'm used to using my mouse on my computer, but this is just a tablet, computer, computer tablet. It's a gray area with this thing. Next is to collaborate with other teachers and our educators. So collaborating with other teachers and our educators can provide new ideas and perspectives on really how to teach the elements of art. So we're gonna talk about the importance of our education for children. So our education really is a critical component of a child's education. It provides them with a platform for self-expression and it really encourages them to think critically and creatively. Um, our education involves the teaching of a variety of forms, including visual art, music, drama, and dance. These art forms offer children an opportunity to develop their creativity, imagination, and aesthetic sensitivity. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Moreover, our education has a positive impact on a child's uh, academic performance and social emotional development. When people are asking you to do some SEL, hello, we're in art. This is SEL. <laughs> it, is, it is SEL. It is social emotional learning. All right, next is, um, nope, lost my spot, guys. Oh, yeah, our education provides children with the opportunity to really learn new skills and techniques, such as drawing, painting, sculpting, performing, dancing, and singing. Sorry about that. I don't sing, but you know, except from except if I'm being silly. <laughs> but kids should learn how to sing. It's another art skill, music, anything. Um, anyways, these skills can help kids to improve their fine motor skills, spatial awareness, and hand-eye coordination. Our education also teaches kids to think creatively and find new and innovative solutions to problems. That's why it ties into math and science so nicely. We're all together, guys. Um, you just can't have one thing in this world. You have to have a bit of everything. And that's just life. You gotta, gotta be well-rounded. Gotta try new things and see how they work together. Because everything is synchronized like that. That's not the word. 
I'm looking for a word. I'll find it later, probably in like 12 o'clock at night <laughs> when I'm sleeping. <laughs> All right, by encouraging children to think outside the box, our education really helps them to develop a growth mindset, which is beneficial in all aspects of life, no matter how old you are. In addition to developing a technical skill and fostering creativity, our education has a positive impact on a children's academic performance. And research, research has shown that children who participate in our education programs really perform better in subjects such as reading, writing, and math. Our education also helps children to develop critical thinking skills, which are essential for success in all academic areas. And furthermore, our education really plays an essential role in a child's, again, social, emotional development, guys, for real. It provides uh, kids with an outlet for self-expression um, and over their, you know, exploring their meanings and emotions that way. Um, so important, so important, guys. Um, our education also fosters a sense of community and belonging. And by working together on our projects, kids can really learn to cooperate, communicate, and respect one another. These social skills are really essential for this as all aspects of life, including relationships, work, community involvement. No matter what job you go into, you got to be able to work with others. Unless you don't work with nobody at all. Like me right now, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I work with others. Um, the el role of elements of art in education. The elements of art, including line, shape, color, value, and texture, form, space, play a crucial role in our education. These elements really serve as the building blocks of artistic expression and are used by artists to create works that are visually compelling, emotionally evocative. Oh yeah, I've gotten some fancy words today, guys. I like it. <laughs> By teaching children about these elements, art educators can provide them with the tools they need to create their own works of art and also appreciate the works of others. Line, for example, is a fundamental element of art that can really be used to create a sense of movement, energy, and emotion. And through the use of line, and artists can really create works that are dynamic, expressive, and visually engaging. Similarly, color is another critical um, element of art that can be used to create mood, atmosphere, and meaning. And by teaching children about color theory and the use of color in art, uh, our educators can help them understand how artists use color to convey ideas and emotions. So moreover, by teaching children about the elements of art, um, our educators can help them develop their critical thinking and observation skills. When children learn to analyze works of art, they are developing their ability to observe, interpret, and evaluate the world around them. So important. And by encouraging children to look closely at works of art and to identify the elements used by the artist, our educators are really helping to develop their visual literacy um, and overall, sorry, their visual literacy and to appreciate the beauty and complexity of the world. Like, it's beautiful. Let's just take a moment to appreciate it. Yeah. Overall, the elements of art play a crucial role in education, helping children to develop their artistic skills, critical thinking abilities, and appreciation for the beauty and world around them. So we're just going to take a brief look at the definitions of each of the seven elements of art just to make sure we're all on the same page. Number one is line. So the line is a continuous mark made on the surface with a pointed tool such as a pen or paintbrush. And the lines can vary in thickness, direction, length, and can be used to create uh, shapes, forms, and texture. Shape is a two-dimensional area that is defined by a boundary. And it can also be organic or geometric and can be used to create patterns, compositions, and the illusion of depth. Color is a visual perception of different wavelengths of light. Yeah, it's very scientific. Colors can be cool. Bring it out, guys. Do 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 do. Which way? This way. Colors can be right there. Nope. Right. Yeah, I was right. Colors can be cool or warm. Cool or warm. Hmm. I prefer my reds on the opposite side, but it might be my camera. Ugh. Whew. 
pillow's disappearing. Anyways, or bright or muted, um, and values can be used to create contrast, depth, and mood. Values, the next one, lightness or darkness of a color or tone. Values can be used to create contrast, depth, and mood. Texture, the surface quality of a work of art. Textures can be rough or smooth, they can be matte or glossy, and can be used to create some visual interest. Um, and a lot of tactile sensations. <laughs> Farm! <laughs> I know you're falling asleep. Don't fall asleep. Don't get distracted by your phone. Come back to me, friend. That's what I'm yelling. A three-dimensional object that occupies space. Forms can be geometric or organic, similarly to shape, and they can also be used to create compositions, sculptures, and installations. Space. The area in and around a work of art Space can be positive, so the area uh, occupied by objects, and the negative, which is the area around them. It can also be used to create depth and balance and perspective. So why teach the elements of art to the kids? Teaching the elements of art to kids is important for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it helps them develop their artistic skills and creativity, and by learning about the different elements and how they can be used to create a work of art, they're able to now experience then express themselves right in new and exciting ways as well as ultimately going to boost their confidence and self-esteem as well as their ability to be problem solvers and critical thinkers additionally learning about the elements of art can also help kids develop their visual literacy skills by analyzing works of art and identifying the different elements um use kids really can learn how to interpret and evaluate visual information which is very helpful in all areas of life such as reading maps understanding graphs and charts interpreting novel non-verbal cues all of the above right and we know like these are all important as a kid as an adult uh, in our lives moreover learning about the elements of art can really help kids uh develop an appreciation of the, of the beauty for the beauty and the complexity of the world around them, right? So by studying works of art from different cultures and time periods, kids can really learn about different perspectives and the way of seeing the world. This can broaden their understanding and empathy for others and encourage them to explore their own creativity and individuality. Overall, teaching the elements of art to kids is important in, for their artistic development cognitive growth and personal enrichment it really does provide them with a foundation for exploring and expressing themselves in new and meaningful ways and of course these are all transitional skills for any area of their life no matter what they become or what they do or what passion they what hobby they pursue to fill their passions tips and tricks for teaching the elements of art to kids Teaching the elements of art to children can be fun and rewarding experience for both teachers and students. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tips and tricks that will help make the process as engaging and as effective as possible. Number one, we're going to start off with the basics, right? So we're going to make sure that we are introducing the seven elements of art one at a time. We can only take in so much, even me. And you might even be fading out at this point of the episode too, right? It takes a lot of concentration to listen to things, right? You can only take in so much before your brain is full. And depending on the age, their, their brain might be full sooner than later, right? Kindergarten compared to high school, for example. But starting off with one at a time provides clear definition and provide clear definitions and examples for each if you are a member of your tacit collective this is a very easy thing to do because it's all going to be in that membership uh the class our tacit collective our curriculum opens at the beginning of every single august and the first week of january every single year so make sure you check that out but essentially it's going to really help children build a strong foundation of knowledge and understanding before you really dive deep into each Next, you're going to want to make sure you use some hands-on activities, encouraging children to explore the elements of art through hands-on activities such as drawing, painting, collage making. Love collage right now. And sculpture. Yeah. Mmm. Sculpture. This will allow them to experiment. <coughs> Dying with different techniques and materials and to develop their own artistic style so make sure you also connect number three to real world examples i know i'm losing you come back to me friend 
help children see the relevance of the elements of art by connecting them to real world examples such as architecture, graphic design, and fashion, right? You gotta make it relevant to them. Whatever is relevant right now in the world for them, you make it relevant for them. If it's Fortnite, eh, somehow Among Us, eh, can you connect it somehow? Like without crossing the weird boundary of the game. So I don't know. Anyways, I'm just saying. Whatever it is, obviously those are, those two things are probably so passe, but I am not a kid, so I don't know what's cool right now. I'm just not that cool to know what's cool. <laughs> to know what's cool. <laughs> but what I, my point is, is find out what they like, survey them, collect that data, and be like, okay, what do you like? And then like facilitate lessons around their interests. And of course, it's going to help them understand how the elements are used in different contexts. And even in those things, right, you can talk about, like, if whatever, I don't play, I don't know, Fortnite, like, for example, I'm not saying to go teach Fortnite, okay, but what, or, uh, what about Minecraft, is that more relevant for Minecraft? You can go in and talk about, and, like, point out, like, just snap screenshots, and, like, talk about, like, the elements of art that are in there, right? For example, Mario, whatever, whatever it is. Um, oh, Mario's, like, a complimentary color, aren't they red and green? Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, it's going to really help them understand the elements of art and how they're used in different contexts and will inspire their own creativity. Four, incorporate technology. Use technology to enhance the learning experience um, for the kids, such as using digital art tools. Love me a Wacom tablet. Love, I actually do love it. It's actually really awesome. <laughs> It's the only reason why I keep I love it. Intuist is like the kid uh, starter version, the Intuist one. Awesome. Awesome. It's like I got it, don't I? Dude, oh, look at the size of this thing. Okay, I'm this is my tablet. This is my Intuist Wacom tablet. Look at my phone size. You can see this comparison of size on this. Just plugs in. You can even Bluetooth it, which I'm so not so great with Bluetooth, so. <laughs> if only I, mean, <laughs> I can only Bluetooth so much. Anyways, what's the point of that? What was I talking about? Oh yeah, the point is something. <laughs> I don't know. It's awesome. Makes it really. I think they're like affordable ones. The affordable line. It's like the kid affordable line one. They're like, oh. yeah. Anyways, this is starter level. And I love it. That's all I need. That's all I need, yo. I'm not so great at. Actually, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyways, or other option instead of digital art tools um, is like really visiting virtual museum tours. There are a lot. There are a lot of those big, big museums. Met. Oh, I think I think a lot of them have um, uh, some virtual tours nowadays. Now, I would highly recommend previewing that <laughs> before you go on. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get in the art world. And you don't really, if you don't want to explain it later or explain it during class, then make sure you preview it. And what I like to do is I open up all my different tabs on my window, my um, internet window, and then I like, will have them already curated on different stops. So that way I'm not accidentally finding things with kids in the room. Although one time, <laughs> I had Picasso on a slideshow. Now, let me tell you, when it's small, you don't see things. And then when it's big, and it's really good for kids. <laughs> it's funny, not funny, but like, in, it's an awkward age because they're like on the verge of like, you know, where I, where I live, we teach like full on like uh, se sexual health and orientation and puberty at that age and like that. So it was like around the same time. Um, anyways, <laughs> that I was teaching that also, uh, anyway, so we're, I, I had the picture, point is I had the picture of Picasso on my computer, I pulled it on, it, I could, you know, look, oh, it's a, uh, not Picasso, sorry, a Salvador Dali, not Picasso at all, Ugh. Salvador Dali, so I'm like, okay, I found one that has no nudity, yeah, perfect, right, like, wait, you know, it's like some, one of the ones with, like, the elephants, and there's, like, balloons, and, like, people floating in the sky or something, anyways, uh, so I pulled that one up, we project it in the class, and we're looking at it, and the kids are looking at it, like, pretty sure those are some boobs. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I live in 
Vancouver and the parents are like, eh, oh. puzzles and other fun activities into lessons to keep children engaged and motivated. Uh, for example, challenge them to create a work of art only using one element or to identify different elements in a famous work of art. In number six is to encourage reflection. I am super big on reflection. Uh, and if you use any of my resources, you're always gonna find some re reflection resources tied into all of them. So encourage children to reflect on their own work and the work of others and to share uh, their thoughts and ideas with the class. This is ultimately going to help them develop their critical thinking skills and gain a deeper appreciation for the creative process. All right, finally is to teach with grade specific art units. So one thing I have really done, tried to do is break up the elements of art um, with creating a unit for each grade. I differentiate skill, technique, content explored by diving into unique themes with each. <clears throat> Pulling totally need a sip of water, guys. It's a lot of talking all at once. So in addition, uh, grade specific arguments can help students build important skills that are essential for success in other areas of their lives. For example, studying the elements of art can help students develop critical thinking skills as they learn to analyze and evaluate different visual compositions it can also help students pro develop problem solving skills as they learn to experiment really with other materials, mediums, techniques, all of the above, right? And these are all gonna help them achieve their own artistic goals. Another benefit of teaching grade specific art units is that it allows for a more structured and comprehensive approach to art education. So by focusing on one element in depth, uh, or one theme in depth for each grade, uh, teachers can ensure that students have a strong understanding of the key concepts and techniques associated with each one. Um, this can really help students feel more confident uh, in their ability to create art and can encourage them to explore their own creativity more fully. Finally, teaching grade specific art units can really help students great, develop a greater appreciation for value and the importance of visual art for the value, not of value, the elements, but for the value and, and importance of visual art. And by learning about history and the significance of different uh, artistic movements and styles, students can really gain a deeper understanding of how art reflects and shapes the world around us. And this can really ultimately inspire students to develop their own artistic voices, artistic voice, and, and to engage uh, with art as a meaningful and important aspect of their lives. Now, if you check out my blog post show notes, which the link is below in the video of the show notes, either on your podcast player or on YouTube, whatever you're watching this on, or on if you're watching this on, yeah, you will find some different elements of art units. Uh, if you are watching this as part of the Artastic Collective Pro D section, then you will find a lot of elements of art units already pre pre-planned for you and lessons and a lot of exclusive content in the elements of our section of your membership. Membership opens August of, er, first week of August every year and the first week of January of every year for five days. So make sure you pay attention and get on my wait list at artasticcollective.com. If you're watching, if you're looking at the show notes right now, you can scroll down to the bottom and you'll find um, some different grade specific units that you can check out. And with that I said, my friends, I'm so excited as for you to dive into the elements of art. In conclusion, teaching the elements of art to children is an important part of their artistic development and personal growth. And by introducing um, them to the seven elements of art, teachers can really help children build a strong foundation of knowledge and understanding that's going to serve them well in all areas of their lives. By using hands-on activities and connecting to real-world examples, incorporating technology, making it fun and encouraging reflection, teachers can create a fun and engaging learning environment that inspires children to explore their own creativity and develop their own unique style. By giving children the tools and knowledge they need to create uh, works of art, we can help them build confidence, self-esteem, and a lifelong love of learning. Well, my friend, that is the end of this episode, and I will see you in the next.